Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen. My soul, let us recover our church. Holy God our Father, you have given us Jesus Christ and have saved us by the grace of God and we thank you for this. And as we abide in your love, we seek to overcome all the obstacles of this world by your power and with great joy and gratitude we seek to worship you in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
주의 말씀 듣고서 준행하는 자를 반석 위에 터닫고 집을 지금 같아 비가 오고 물나며 바람 부딪혀도 반석 위에 세운 집 넘어지지 않네 잘 짓고 잘 짓세 우리 집잘 짓세 만세 반석 위에다 우리 집잘 짓세 주의 말씀 듣고도 행치 않는 자는 모래 위에 터닫고 집을 지금 같아 비가 오고 물나며 바람 부딪힐 때 모래 위에 세운 집 크게 무너지네 잘 짓고 잘 짓세 우리 집잘 짓세 만세 반석 위에 다 우리 집잘 짓세 세상 모든 사람들 집을 짓는 자리 반석 위가 아니면 모래 위에 짓네 우리 보주 오셔서 지은 삶을 줄때 세운 공작 따라서 영영 상벌 주니 잘 짓고 잘 짓세 우리 집잘 짓세 만세 반석 위에다 우리 집잘 짓세 이 시간 At this time, let us rely on the precious blood of the Lord and seek forgiveness from God. Let us pray to God in repentance. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
God, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, God our Father, according to your great love and grace, we give you thanks and glorify you. Since you are spirit, we seek to worship you in spirit and in truth, for these are the kinds of worshippers that you seek. And so we pray that we can give you a true and special worship in spirit and in truth. And as we use all our heart, soul, and strength to worship you, we pray that you would guide our worship by the Holy Spirit, and all those who worship, we pray, may be blessed in the fullness of the Holy Spirit at this time. Holy God our Father, as we rely on the blood of our Lord, we pray that all who worship you may trust in the merit of your blood, the blood of the Lord, and we pray that as we seek to make disciples of all nations, we pray that we may teach all believers according to the truth, and that just as you had said, that we become witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and to Samaria and to the ends of the earth, we pray that we may obey this command, and we pray that we may become witnesses everywhere we go, and teach the forgiveness of sins and would teach about the truth. We pray that we may learn how to rely and to use the name of Jesus in our lives. We pray that you would be with us. And as we live our lives on this earth, we pray that we may examine the scriptures every day and rely and use the name of Jesus in our everyday lives. Holy God our Father, as we pour out our prayers, we pray that you would remember the prayers that your people give to you and would work powerfully among us. And just as you had used Samuel to guide all the people by your wisdom, we pray that you would answer the prayer of all of your people. And as we follow the leadership of our overseer, Pastor Sung Young Kim, we pray that you would powerfully use him. And we also pray that you will bless the central office of our church, which is working very busily to arrange all the financial and the legal matters that we are facing in our church. We pray that you would be with the central office. And as the whole church works really hard, we pray that we may all work together very well. And we also pray for the legal team of our church that all of their plans and all of their operations may come to success. And when the overseer, Pastor Sung Young Kim, comes upon the pulpit to proclaim your word, we pray that you would give him the wisdom, knowledge, and power coming from your word. And when all of your people listen to these words of God, we pray that, the, that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit and would bear, tr and would bear fruit since we love you and praise you from the deepest part of our spirits we pray that you would remember your people and would bless them and from the beginning of the morning to the end of the evening we pray that all those who love you and participate in works of service in your church would receive your blessings and would accept your love we pray all this in the expectation that you'll hear the words of your servant we pray in the name of jesus amen The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Holy God, our Father, we pray 
that you would bless all of your faithful people who have brought their offerings in devotion to you. We pray that you remember their offerings and would bless them and be with them. We pray that you will bless all those who have given their holy construction offerings out of gratitude to you. We pray that you would guide them in their lives. We also pray that you will bless those who have given their tithe offerings to you. As they have given their thanks to you with great joy, we pray that you would give your unlimited blessings upon their spirits. We pray also for those who have given their monthly offerings. We pray that you would be with them as they have been concerned for the livelihood of your church. We pray that you will bless all of these believing families with your blessings from heaven. We pray for all of these families who have given their thanksgiving offerings. We pray that all of these families who have given their offerings would be blessed and that they may be enabled to continually come to you according to your great power. We pray that you would bless all of these believers and families and that you would fill them with the blessing and grace of God from heaven. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May all those who have given their precious offerings of faith be filled with the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah.
The Word of God is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 27. It is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 27. Let us read it together. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you, away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds beat and blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Amen. Now let us pray for our overseer that he will be filled with God's inspiration and let us all pray that we would submit in obedience to these words of God preached by the overseer. Now let us all pray out loud together. Holy God our Father, I pray that on this precious day of the Lord, that we may all receive your word. I pray that you may grant your grace, power and authority upon your servant, and when your servant carries out the duties you have given him today, I pray that all of your people may receive your great power. I pray in the name of Jesus, Amen. The church that bears good fruit. Let us all read the sermon outline. God is the farmer. He personally created, rules and saves for the sake of good fruit. God sows good seed and reaps good fruit. He created everything in the universe, called Hades, and sowed good seed among the humans in it. But the cunning devil deceived and corrupted them. This is how mankind was seized by sin and death at the start. God sent His Word, who is the truth, and God loves and is pleased with Him. But false prophets are quietly coming in and pillaging. Watch out! Our spirits were once alive, but due to the pillaging of false prophets, the church was completely devastated. Therefore, arm yourselves with the truth and remember what is true. When believers are deceived by lies, they discard the knowledge of the truth and bring fierce judgment on themselves. Discern who is the true shepherd. A true shepherd builds up, but false prophets make others stumble. No one loves more than a mother. A true mother leads unbelievers to become believers. Those who sow seeds with maternal instincts gain good fruit. But evildoers without maternal instincts produce thistles. Do not stumble or lose your first determination. 
and firmly wait for the day of the Lord. Do not be deceived. Those who pillage are devils. What God is greatly interested in is that all humanity would safely receive the grace that God intends to give them. So, believers like us today must be taught properly in the situation that we are in and we must receive the assistance of God so that we can be safely protected in our salvation. And if we do this, our spirits will be safely protected until the end, until the day that we are saved. So our status Our status is not only in name, but our salvation is real. It is realistic. So realistically speaking, we have been saved from sin and death. Furthermore, in this reality that we are in, we reject sin and we live this life of faith and we continue safely in this salvation and we continue to preserve that state of salvation that we are currently in. And in order to maintain this, we perform good deeds and we show the proof of our faith by rejecting sin every day. We prove this by we prove this by our deeds able every day to prove our faith. So we prove by providing the evidence that we have come away from sin and we reject sin and we have been liberated from this death and we show this in our everyday lives. So not only do we reject sin, but we show love and we devote ourselves to God and we show humble obedience. So the reason that we do this is so that our devotion can be offered as a confession to God. We show this as a confession, as people of faith. And in this way, we remain protected by God. This is how God protects us. So when we talk about the idea of living by faith, we, when we talk about the idea of being saved by faith, this is what we mean. When we show our good deeds day by day to prove our salvation by faith, and we show our actions so that we can provide evidence for the permanent effect that we have received by this salvation. So, in order to dwell safely in the salvation that God has given us, we come into the church and we are all led by the Holy Spirit in the church. So, it is by the grace of God that we have escaped out of sin and now for the rest of our lives we remain in this grace and while the message of grace is pre is preached to us in this way we remain safely in God's salvation so this church and on the final day, we will separate from those who will be destroyed and we will be saved and brought up to meet with the Lord Jesus. 
So it is on the day of judgment that we will be separated from those who will be destroyed and we will be saved by the Lord Jesus. So since God desires to save humanity on the earth, God's plan is very important. And in the same way, the one who preaches about God's plan, who preaches about the salvation of God, is very important because he has been entrusted with the duty of preaching about the plan of God's salvation. If this plan is not put into effect through the preacher, this will be a very important feature that will be skipped. So we are talking about something very important when we talk about the one who has to do the preaching, who preaches the plan of God's salvation. But there is a problem if the preacher does not have his heart right. If the motives of the preacher is not right and he follows his own individual greed, if a preacher follows his own individual greed, it is because he is not doing what God wants. So, the preacher of God's salvation has been given a duty, but if he does not carry out his duty, it means he is following his individual greed within him. And if this happens, there will be a, there will be a risk that the message that God wants to be preached is not successfully preached, and this can become a great problem. But, the message that God wants to be preached contains the salvation that He has planned. But if this duty to preach this message and this plan is not done by the preacher who has been given this duty, then the message won't be known. And not only will this message not be faithfully preached to the people, so this message of salvation, of God's salvation, will not be preached successfully and no one will understand and, and this duty of God will not be carried out. So there is a person who preaches the plan of God and the prophets in the past were entrusted with the same duty to preach the message of God and they heard the words of God so that they could preach the message of God, the word of God to the people of Israel. And so John the Baptist was known as the final prophet for Israel. And after this, there were shepherds entrusted to take care and to tend for the flock of the people. In the past, in the Old Testament, God had revealed his will through the prophets of Israel, but later on, Jesus Christ came directly to directly preach about God's revelation. And this message through Jesus Christ was preached for all the people of the world. It was a universal message to bring them together as one. It was all united in Jesus Christ so that not a single thing about God's revelation was missed except through Jesus Christ. So everything that God has revealed was actually something that was previously revealed since the very beginning through the prophets. So the message that the prophets preached and what shepherds preach today are the same thing. So these are exactly the same things that we are talking about. And today we are talking about false teachers as different from true shepherds. And there is much to say about this. So if people, if those who have been entrusted with preaching about God's salvation do not faithfully carry out this duty, there is a risk that this message will be diluted. It will not be successfully transferred to the people. It won't be satisfactorily conveyed to the people and this will be a great problem and this is largely because of false prophets 
So false prophets have existed since the past. In fact, it has it has existed since the very beginning. False prophets have existed at every age of history, and they will continue to come. And these people will continue to hinder the plan of God. So, false prophets have a skill in deceiving people. They are very clever and cunning, and they deceive crowds of people to follow them and to be deceived. And a typical thing that they do is that they secretly hide who they really are in order to carry out their deceptive plan. So, false prophets oftenly show an outward appearance of being really good and innocent, but actually they are full of lies on the inside. This is why it is very dangerous if false prophets are exist, if false prophets exist and they are going around doing their work. Although they should have carried out the duty of preaching God's sincere plan of salvation and to keep everybody safe in the in the salvation of God, yet they have been corrupted, they have corrupted the duty of preaching the gospel of salvation. All they needed to do is carry out this sacred duty entrusted by God to preach about His salvation. They, nearly, they merely needed to preach their salvation. And, those, and this is all because those who have been entrusted with this duty have have a spiritual responsibility. They should have faithfully conveyed God's salvation to the people. So those who have been trusted for this duty are prophets. And although these people should have faithfully carried out this duty, they did not. And these are known as false prophets. And why did they do this? Why didn't they do this faithfully? It was because of the greed inside them. They were very greedy on the inside. It was because there was greed and selfish ambition living within them. So the characteristic feature of false prophets is that they have the lingering greed inside them, which, dri which drives them to do what they do. So this greed enters into their hearts. And in a person's heart, there lies all kinds of thoughts, ideas, beliefs, and system of belief that drives that person to do whatever they do. It controls everything of that person. And if greed invades into the heart, this will become, this greed will become actually the sole motive for the way they behave. So all of our thoughts are driven by the motives that are inside us. And if greed lingers inside, this becomes the sole motive for that person's behavior. And then because of that greed, this greed will drive them to, to behave in this way. So some people do not spare any lies or malicious speech. They say all that they need to say in order to fulfill their their greedy plan, and they will not they will not hesitate to say anything to fulfill their evil designs. They do this very cunningly and very and in a very surprisingly smart way. And they will not have any intent to change their plans. Although they do not show, show who they really are on the inside, so they hide who they really are in the face of the people. And on the outside, they only show what they want people to see. They only show that they have an apparent innocent appearance, a good and kind appearance on the outside. And this can be a very dangerous thing for the church because the church is consisting of people who are willing to hear. So, the people in the church should be trained to discern who is true and who is false. But since the people of the church can be deceived by false prophets, since the environment is ideal for false prophets 
to do their work of deception. It is a, the church is an ideal environment for them to reap many believers for their own deceptive plans. So a true preacher will not preach about himself, but God will entrust faithful and truthful truthful shepherds to take care of his church. But although there will be true shepherds sent by God himself who have been truly sent, there will also be false prophets who have not actually been sent by God, yet they claim to be true prophets. They claim to be shepherds who have been sent by God. This has always been the case in the pattern of history. And so it has been, the Bible warns us of this again and again without rest that these false shepherds will also come. So false prophets and false shepherds will come, but the Bible teaches us to discern, to distinguish who is a true shepherd and who is a false prophet. We must be very shrewd in discerning who are true shepherds and who are false prophets. So throughout the history of the church, there has been conf constant conflict, but constant conflict between the church and false prophets. So we are not talking about something that is very small or something that has happened only recently. No, this has happened since the beginning of the of the history of the church, and Satan has been working behind the false prophets. So even Moses has spoken about the false prophets. So as we can see, the phenomenon of false prophets has been around since the beginning. So Moses has sternly warned about the presence of false prophets. What he says is that we must swiftly remove those false prophets among us because People like Moses were preaching the true words of God, but among the people there would also be false prophets to deceive the people away from the worship of God. So the work of false prophets will go against the true words of God, so we must overcome them. So God commands the people explicitly that they themselves need to get rid of the false prophets among them. So we will read this Bible passage together found in Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 to 5. And something else to note is that the words found in this passage contains the Lord your God. So there is no need there is no need to understand this or to think that this represents Jehovah or Jehovah said this. What we what we importantly need to understand that this is talking about our God, the Lord, our God. We are not talking about, we do not need to think of it as Jehovah, but this is the Lord, our God. We can understand this as any person of the Trinity. This is, this is all talking about the three persons of the Trinity, the Lord, our God. We do not need to understand this any other way. So let us read from Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice, and you shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst.
So false prophets will will try to lead you away from the true path of God. They will try to convince you out of keeping your true duty, which has been commanded by God. They will try to tear you away from the true path of God, and they will be a thorn in your midst. They will be evil in your midst. Nevertheless, there has always been the presence of false prophets. Because there, there was... There was always there was always a group there was always a portion of the people that are deceived and they listen to the lies of false prophets so god had predicted that there will be false prophets among the people and there will still continue to there will still continue to be the presence of false prophets they will suddenly appear and false prophets and antichrists will continue to appear and they will even show uh, deceptive signs and wonders to try and even convince the elect away from the faith, even if that were possible. So, the Bible tells us that even those who have been elected for salvation since the beginning, false Christs and false prophets will even deceive them. And the same message has been preached by the Apostle John. He says that many deceivers have gone out into the world. And even Apostle Paul, when he gave his final address to the people of Ephesus, he said, he said in verse 30, also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch. And remember that for three years I did not cease to warn any, everyone night and day with tears. He warns us to stay on guard against savage wolves who will come in and they will wreak havoc against the, against the flock. So we can see that Apostle Paul is sternly warning us against the deceptive work of false false prophets who will cause great trouble and confusion and division against the flock of God. And Paul further says, he talks about false prophets and he says, in later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doc doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So these are those who speak lies they appear very righteous and upright on the outside, yet actually on the inside they have no conscience, they have no qualms on the inside, they don't feel guilty about anything, they don't hesitate in doing any kind of evil and or speaking any kind of lie. So this is the characteristic of false prophets. They, without any guilt, they speak completely fabricate, fabricated lies. The reason why they do this is because there is there is great greed on the inside. And because they have greed living in their hearts, it will drive them. It will push them to do whatever they need to carry out those greedy plans. This is so. So Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 7 to 18, tells us that they are driven. They they are driven with a flattering tongue. They have smooth words and flattering speech to deceive the hearts of the simple. So they all do this. They do all of this because of that greed living inside them. And they use smart and deceptive words to deceive simple people. So the Bible tells us not to, f not to be deceived by just any spirit because they will easily deceive the heart. But Apostle John warns us about this. Again, he warns us not to believe every spirit that preaches to us, but we must always test the spirits to see if what they're saying is trustworthy. Because there are both false prophets and true prophets. So, in order to save us from this corrupt life, God has established a true shepherd. But the way to discern 
there is a special method to discern whether one is a true prophet. The true prophet has been sent by God. The true prophet has been ordained by God himself. He has been established by God. And the true prophet will preach the message that has been ordained by God. He doesn't preach about himself, but true prophets will, tr will preach the message that has genuinely come from God. So this, so when we hear the message coming from the one who is sent by God, this is basically the same as listening to God's voice himself. So this is wholly of another level. This is the voice of God. And this was the case with Moses. So when Moses was called by God, what Moses had said, he said, Lord, I am slow in speech. I am not very skillful at speaking. Do not send me. I cannot do this. But what did God say? No matter how bad you are at speaking, if I've told you to go, you must go. I will put words in your mouth for you to speak. So God had called a person who had difficulty speaking and he commanded him to go to the people to speak. So, battling with false prophets is not an easy task. But Moses had told the people that he was sent truly by God to speak the words of God itself. And Jeremiah also said the same thing again and again to the people. What we can see throughout long passages in the in the book of Jeremiah containing the same thing, the same teachings warning against false prophets. So, through Jeremiah, God tells them, God tells them, I have not sent them. I have not sent these false prophets who are trying to deceive you. So, these false prophets claim to prophesy in my name, but they are speaking lies, and I have not sent them, or commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and the seat of, of their hearts. So God, so God says in Jeremiah that all these false prophets, they are speaking lies and false divination and visions that have not come from God at all. So this is the characteristic of false prophets. They are even worse than savage animals who rip apart the flock. Because false prophets act very much like savage wolves. Notice that savage wolves come in, come into the flock to tear away at the sheep, to tear away at the flesh. And so false prophets will act in a similar way, but they are even worse because they pretend to be as gentle as sheep and as upright and as innocent as sheep, but actually they are savage wolves and they will not hesitate to tear away at the flock for their own individual gain. So what does it mean when false prophets come to tear away at the innocent flock? What this means is this, if we are deceived by these false prophets and believe what they say, we ourselves will perish. So if we believe in the attractive words that these false prophets say, we will be destroyed and we ourselves will be destroyed and we ourselves will become children of, children of God's wrath. We cannot escape the, des the destination of these false prophets themselves. So let us quickly go to, to today's passage specifically. What God specifically says about this, God himself has spoken about this. So let us read what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly 
they are ravenous wolves. So what this is telling us, what Jesus tells us is that false prophets are like ravenous wolves. What does ravenous mean? It means that they are always hungry. They are intent and be, they are very hungry. They are not satisfied and they will not hesitate to tear away at the flesh of the sheep. So they, these, these, ra these ravenous wolves will try to change the mind of simple believing people. They will try to deceive them, to change their minds, to deceive them so that they will follow a wrong path. They are like cobras. So, so consider the example of cobras as you know that whole cobras, they just suddenly move and before you know it, without the blink of an eye, they have already planted that poison in, in the prey. So you cannot see the movement of cobras because they are so quick in the movement of their, in the movement of, in the movement. And before you know it, they have already planted in the poison to completely destroy the prey. So Apostle, Apostle Paul and Apostle Peter have all told about the same thing. Apostle Peter has said that these, these false prophets are like, are like senseless beasts without any reason. They do not think about consideration or kindness or truthfulness or gentleness. They are like beasts. Although they are human beings, the way that they behave are like brute and senseless beasts. And so, there is, so, for the people, for the people in the time of the New Testament, they would have instantly understood what this message was, because in the land of Palestine, in the land of Israel, there were all kinds of these beasts. They were hungry, ravenous beasts, who would act, they would behave in a ferocious way and tear at the, the sheep of the shepherd. But, but sheep in a flock, they act quite differently. They act in a much more innocent way. So if you actually look at the behavior of sheep, they can easily be led away and they believe that they believe that just some random person is the true shepherd and they will follow they will follow them. So sheep are quite gullible and this is the same for simple minded believers. But but false shepherds have no compassion. They have no compassion at all. They will not hesitate to satisfy their own greed. What is the purpose of their life? To satisfy their baseless hunger. But, but, these, but these false shepherds are actually very smart. They are very clever and they use smart plans to deceive, to, to satisfy their own individual greed. Because, but the problem is, because they hide their own personal identity, they hide who they really are, it is very easy for them to deceive. So we are not talking about, we are not talking about people who look murderous and they look combative on the outside. If they looked aggressive on the outside, it would be easy to, easy to, to tell that they are they are murderous and aggressive people and, you, and anybody will know that you need to run away. But actually, these false prophets are very deceptive. They, they speak very sweet and attractive words to easily deceive people. So throughout the history of Israel, there were plenty of false prophets who acted in deceptive, quite appealing ways to deceive people to follow them. And so there were also there was also a particular clothing that prophets that true prophets of Israel would wear. So as we know that the clothing of prophets was that they would wear they would wear the cloth of camels or other similar other similar beasts and this was a this was a special sign to signify that you were a true prophet sent by God. And, and 
And naturally, because John the Baptist was a prophet sent by God, he wore also the he wore also the hair of camels, and and anybody who wore this, we would immediately know that this was a prophet sent by God for Israel. And yet, the problem was that false prophets would also deceptively wear these clothes, even though they were not sent by God. So, the prophets of Israel would customarily wear the wear the wear the outer skins of camels and similar beasts and yet the problem is that these false prophets would also wear wear sheep's clothing meaning that they would appear just like normal they would appear just like normal normal sheep completely deceiving the people. So just as just as there were there was a customary style of clothing for true prophets sent by God, in the same way there was there was the customary appearance for the way that shepherds should make themselves to appear like. But actually although they had the uh, appearance of soft softness and kindliness, just like normal sheep, they were full of lies, full of greed and murderous on the inside. They were they were unrighteous completely on the inside, full of lies, always ready to speak misleading words to deceive people for their own cause. And their design is ultimately their their design ultimately would lead those who have been saved and they will actually lead them to perish and those who believe them those who follow the false prophets will join the same destination and why is this because they follow the same destination as the false prophets and they will end up with the same reward so salvation has been given by the almighty god who wants to save us but if we are deceived by false prophets we will follow the same destination as them. So, if we are not careful and we are deceived, we can completely throw off the salvation God originally wanted for us. But there is a way, there is a special way that we can discern who the false prophets are. So, Jesus says, you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn, bush, thorn bushes or figs from thistles? As is found in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. So Jesus is saying that we can discern who the false prophets are by their actions, by what they have been doing. You can understand who false, who false prophets are by what they have done and by what they have said. We are not talking about anything spectacular here. So, although a false prophet can hide who they are for the time being, we can tell who false prophets are by their fruit, by the actions that they do, and there will be a certain end, even though they try to hide their identity. All of a sudden, it will be clear in a huge surprise, in a in a in a big bang, you'll immediately understand who the false prophets are and it'll be clear for everybody to see. So, Jesus says, it is by their fruit that you know them. And this has been the way to see who false prophets are, by what they have done. You will see their true nature by what they have done. And so, if you look at a tree, there will be the fruit that the tree produces. So if it is a pear tree, it'll produce the fruit of pears. If it is an apple tree, it'll produce the fruit of apples. So let us say that you are in the hot summer and you want to get some shade. And then while you are hot, while you are re relaxing under the shade of an apple tree, you may look up to see if there is fruit of the apple. But for false prophets, they have no interest in producing any good quality fruit. So if we, if we look at a fig tree, 
we want to find the fruit of figs. But the thing about the thing about false prophets is that they have no interest. They have no special interest in producing any genuine fruit. So what is the fruit that the Bible talks about? What is this term that the Bible talks of by fruit? So fruit refers to attitude. It refers to a person's attitude and the deeds that come from that attitude. So I'll just give a simple explanation. So Remember that John the Baptist was giving a baptism of repentance for the people. And while he was preaching baptism, then all of a sudden there were there were Pharisees and Sadducees who came to see what John the Baptist was doing. And so it appeared like they had come to John the Baptist also to repent and be baptized. Yet John the Baptist knew who they were for real. He knew, he knew that although they appeared to want to escape the wrath of God, yet, yet John made it very plain to them, you must bear fruit worthy of repentance. Everything is useless. You must bear the fruit that is worthy of repentance. If you do not show this fruit, if you do not show that you produce good fruit, you will immediately be thrown into the fire. So, genuine believers who heard his message and then they immediately asked, okay, so what are we supposed to do? What is it that we are supposed to do to produce fruits worthy of repentance? And what John the Baptist said, first of all, is simple actions of good, simple good actions that a person can do for the neighbor. As we know, there was a very clear system of good work, of good deeds that Israelites could do for their neighbors. And then the tax collectors also asked John, and what must we do? Only demand from the people the amount of money you have been required to. Do not collect any more than you have been appointed to do. So John the Baptist prescribed simple deeds, simple deeds of good for them to do. And then the soldiers asked John the Baptist what to do. And he said, do not act aggressively. What the Bible says, do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. So we are so John told the soldiers not to act aggressively or ferociously towards the people, to not intimidate them. So you will ask, all these small things, this doesn't seem very important. On the contrary, these are very important because if we do not show these good deeds, it means that our salvation is not genuine because these good deeds will come from the heart. It is all because of what is in our heart. It is because of the attitude of our hearts that we have the desire to do these good deeds. If we love, if we love someone or we do some good, it is because of the heart within us that is driving us to do this. So there needs to be proof of the faith within us. There must be a proof of the attitude. Therefore, there needs to be there needs to be the clear deed, which is which is visible proof of the faith of that attitude within us that God can see and other people can see. This is the way that we carry out the faith and salvation that God has planned. So the Bible tells us, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As found in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And, he, and the Bible also tells us that we need to be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 
So this is how we produce good fruit. We have to be fruitful in every good work. And it also says in Philippians, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. This is found in Philippians chapter 1 verses, verse 11. And, and God continues, the Bible continues to tell us that we need to be, we need to have the fruit of the Spirit. We need to show by the proof of our actions that we have been born again and we have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So those who belong to Jesus Christ have been called by God and they will hear the word of God. And those who hear with a good attitude will produce good fruit. And how do we show this fruit? By, by a good attitude and good deeds. However, false prophets who have a bad heart, they will produce bad fruit, who also have a bad heart and a bad character in them. So bad fruits, bad fruits will also pr produce other bad fruit. So it is all concerning the heart inside, that heart and that character inside us. However, a true shepherd will preach and, and they will carry out the duty of God with humility and with a good attitude and true shepherds that have been sent by God will always think of honoring God, of obeying God with deep humility and always thinking of the concern of the church first rather than anything else so this is the good this is the godly attitude that we should follow however false prophets will be proud they will be selfish they will always think of themselves they will always think of their own individual greed and because of the bad character and the bad heart of false prophets this will produce all kinds of unpredictable and surprising evil so I have only spoken very brief but important principles about this. So bad character can only go so far. And this is because good, a good character will produce good fruit, but a bad character will produce bad fruit. So we can all tell whether a tree is good or bad by the fruit that it produces. So this is this is all connected, this is all inevitably connected to the quality of the character. If a person's character is good, it will produce it'll produce good fruit. But those people who have a bad character within them, this will inevitably produce bad fruit. It cannot be avoided. So let us read it all together. Matthew chapter 7 verse 18. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So we are talking about good fruit that is produced by a good tree. So, if something, if if it is a good tree, it will produce good fruit because good fruit cannot be produced by a bad tree. It is impossible for a bad tree to produce good fruit or the other way around. It is impossible, it is impossible for a bad tree to produce good fruit. So, what is found on the inside will be revealed, will be revealed will be revealed by what a person has done. Everything, everything that is on the inside will be revealed by the fruit which can be clearly seen on the outside. So, the shepherds will deceive and those who deceive or believe in that deception will be destroyed. So it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 19, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So we are talking about matters in the last days. We are not talking about, about something that is happening now, but it will all be told, it will all be fulfilled on the last days. Everything will be fulfilled. It will start right now and it will continue until the final days.
We are talking about matters about the last days when those deceivers and those who have been deceived will all be thrown into the lake of fire. And who will throw them? Who will throw them into the lake of fire? It will be God himself who throws them all into the lake of fire. We can see that this is an unchanging and very clear truth. God himself will throw all deceivers and those who have been dece those who have deceived in the deception to be thrown into the lake of fire. So even false prophets have plenty of words to say for their own defense. But actually, it will not be the case. Their case will not stand. They will all be thrown into the fire. So even the false prophets, they will say to God on that final day, Lord, we had, do we had done all these good works. Can't you see? But God will say, God will say, I never knew you. And this is because they did not produce any good fruit. Every one will be surprised because it will be clear for all to see on that final day that they did not have any good fruit. And on that final day, it will all be told for what it is. Everything will be revealed. So, not only the false prophets will be thrown into the lake of fire, but those who had believed in their lies will also perish and they will be judged. So those who have believed in the lies of the false prophets, they also will perish. So although their intent may have been good, yet they were deceived by the lies of the false prophets. They believed in those lies and they thought that there was some truth in them. God will judge them for this because they had deceived in those lies and they acted on that belief in the false, in the false lies. So God will judge everything and those who have delighted in falsehood, who have delighted in lies, they will all perish and be thrown into the fire. So in conclusion, it is by the fruit that you can tell who they are. You will know them by their fruits. This is why we need to distinguish who is a false prophet and who is a true shepherd. So, God, God will surely judge and reveal once and for all who are false prophets and who are deceivers and who are speaking lies and he will throw all of them into the fire. But you, some people may hear this and say, oh no, we need to be patient even for them. We need to love them and we need to accept them. This is not the case at all. If we say this, we are actually denying what God himself has said. God has strictly said that we must remove the false prophets from among us. So, we are speaking of all of these things. And this is based on a, this is based on a plan that we go through all the parts of the Bible and discuss discuss what is in them. But what is important is that not a single one of us will fall out of the plan of God and be deceived. We have to firmly defend our faith. We have to stay on God in our faith because God's salvation is found inside our faith. In order to maintain ourselves in God's salvation, we must remain in this faith. We must re remain safely in because, because the reality of his salvation is found here. There is nothing that will not be disclosed on the same the, on there is nothing that will not be disclosed on the final day. We cannot set our hearts on any other place. God has given us salvation. We have our salvation and we must vigilantly keep it. Do you believe in God's salvation? Do you, be do you believe that God has given you salvation and you that you have this? If we have the salvation, we must be on God. We must be afraid of losing the salvation. 
So I ask you, do you also believe in God's judgment? If you believe that God has a judgment, you must be trembling and you must be in fear and in trembling for the sake of your own salvation that you remain in it. Because this is the salvation that God had given us because the Son of God Himself had come down to give us this salvation. He had to come down on this earth. He had to die on the cross. He had to shed His blood for our sakes. And for our sakes, He also rose from the dead. And it is He who is calling us and is saving us. This is what we have to keep in mind. God, God did not pay any... God by no means paid a small price for our salvation. If we keep this in mind, then we must quickly change ourselves. We must change our hearts. We must prove the genuineness of our faith. We must prove that we have grace within us, that we have salvation inside us. We must show this by clear proof for coming from our actions. We must swiftly change what is in our hearts. So what I emphasize to you it's, this is not only referring to the shepherds or to the leaders. This is referring to all of us. All of us must change from the heart because we have all been sent by God. We are all servants of God. And although we are servants of God, as a church, together, as one, we are like a temple. So just as there was a temple in Jerusalem with prophets to guide them, you and I are all together as a temple of God. And this is through Jesus Christ. Because the Lamb of God had provided the sacrifice once and for all, for everyone, and He is He is the true temple. And in this temple, there is no, there is no opportunity to for anybody to show their individual greed or to follow individual greed but as one together we must walk on this path of repentance we must actively repent and turn back to God every day so that no one will forget the grace that they had received from God because the cross of Christ the cross of Christ must always remain in our hearts we must always remember it and with this in mind, we must make the daily effort to turn back to God in repentance. This is how we can maintain our salvation. And the Holy Spirit will be with us. Hallelujah. So let us pray. Let us pray that our spirits will follow the Word of God very faithfully and that we will obey the will of God and we will vigilantly Maintain this salvation that we have received. We need to maintain this salvation so that it continues, so that it will be protected until the end of time. We must make the continual effort to keep our salvation on God and to remain in it. So let us pray out loud together. Holy God our Father, we pray that all who have heard your word will be acceptable to you. And we pray that your voice will not depart from us and will not depart from the depth of our spirits. But rather, we pray that your voice, your living voice, will all will remain in every one of our hearts. 
and that we can offer ourselves as sanctified before you and that you would accept every devotion that we give you. We pray that you would change the attitudes of our hearts deep from within so that we can have good character and that we can produce good deeds for you. We pray that since you are the one who has started this work in us and that you carry out this process until it reaches a final conclusion, therefore, we pray that not a single one of us will fall out from your faithfulness, but that we will show ourselves as faithful for you. We pray that you would save your church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must make the perspective clear. We must make our direction clear in the presence of God. So until the final day when God saves us, we must confess ourselves what our faith really is towards God. Sarangi Sonnen Sure. 
내 생명 주님께 이제는 May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon all the people of Sungwak Church and upon their families and upon the Baryans around the world forever. Amen. After two weeks, there will be Resurrection Day, also known as Easter Day. And so on the day of Resurrection Day, there will be a united family United Family Worship Day so that we can com commemorate and honor God. And in the lobby, there will also be an opportunity to purchase the new book published by Barrier Publishing Company. It is called Know the Truth. So this is a newly published book written by Pastor Kidong Kim. So, whoever wishes to purchase this new book can purchase it in the first floor in the lobby of this building. So, since we have a whole week ahead of us, let us hold to the Word of God so that we can prepare ourselves and devote ourselves to God together as one. Let us also pray very diligently for the central office of our church, which is working really hard to solve the legal and the financial difficulties that we are in. Let us pray for the central office of this church. So let us work diligently together that we would solve the current legal difficulties that we are facing. And let us all pray together as one, and let us remain firm together. This is what I entreat to you. Thank you very much.
같은 분은 없네 주님 같은 분은 없네